you know, the great thing about the shower outside, you don't have to uh, be inside. I'm Charlie, I'm 50, and I live on Stone Mountain in North Carolina. We live in the gateway of the Appalachians, the gateway of the Smokies. We're at 3,000 feet elevation. To say it's isolated here would be a good way to describe how we live. This mountain is just a sense of freedom. It's quiet, it's dark. You cut the lights out here, the lights is out unless they're lightning bugs. You hear the stream flowing up where I get my water. You hear the whoopoe wheels going and the owls are hooting. And the fact that I could just go hunting or not go hunting, it's just a unique place to live. Oh, the mountain is so much in my blood. It's uh, something you can't explain until you stayed here and lived in and experienced the challenges that it offers to you. It's definitely a choice to live here. It's not the easiest, most convenient. And when you work for something and go get it or have to travel to go get it, you appreciate it. You'd be upset when you drop an egg. The mountain always gets in the way of things. It's a mountain and it's affected a lot of relationships I've had in the past. Is that what happened with you and Jen? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, pinch. Jen. She's the uh, most loving, faithful, honest, majestic woman I've ever met. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. I'm Jennifer, I'm 47, and I live in Titusville, Florida. Little pinch right underneath the one, two, three. I'm definitely a beach girl. I've been spoiled. I've lived on the beach most of my life. I love it. Well, this is nice. When you live on the ocean, there's something about it that's a part of who you are. I think that's probably been the case for me. My kids are still living the beach life, and that's the biggest sacrifice I'm making. Moving to the mountain is being away from my boys because my ex-husband and I share custody. So for now, my kids are gonna stay with their father while I go try this out with Charlie. And I'm willing to make that sacrifice because I do believe he is my soulmate. No, you're not gonna be getting this in the mountains. I know. I met Jen about 28 years ago. We dated about a year and a half. He had this lively spirit, and he drew me in. Like, I liked who he was immediately. He has the best smile on the planet. I love his voice when he calls my name, how he talks to me, just his, like the way his strong shoulders are. I love Charlie's heart. The way he is towards me feels protective, and I love that. We were serious, as serious as you could be at that age. It was fun and wild and great. But then there was something else there that was like, if I was gonna marry somebody, I'd marry you. But we weren't ready to be married. And we were so immature and so young. The reason that it didn't work out for Jen and I was because it was me. I had a, a wandering spirit. But I knew when Jen and I split up that I made a mistake. I was heartbroken over him. He was the love that didn't work out. Like, he was the love I just had to move on from. And when I left, I buried him. And then, this past year, at my sister's wedding, Jen walked in, and we just picked up where we left off. We hugged each other, talked to each other face to face, and then the same connection was there immediately. Like, no time had passed. And then, and then we were just together after that. It just caught us off, off guard, really. It's kind of like, wait a minute, like what's happened and what are we doing? We both have lives. Charlie's not moving off the mountain. He loves the woods, he loves the country lifestyle. It's literally in his blood and I don't know how to explain it. It's who he is, is to live on the mountain. Leaving the mountain for me right now at this point is not an option. I've traveled, I've got to see the world. I've been to some of the most beautiful places that you could go and they are beautiful, but it ain't home. Mama. Hey. And since we lost my father, my mom, she's been through a lot. Uh, challenged visually since she was a child. Did you hear the mouths last night? Shoot, it's loud. I mean, there were one or two of them. Mama's house is on a different part of the property. She does live far away. I see her every day. Oh, 100%, I'm a mama's favorite son. 
I'm our only son. <laughs> Jen and Mama have a really tight relationship. When Jen and I split up, she ended up staying with my mama for a year, and she stayed in touch with our family. Well, I'm fixing to uh, go get Jen. What a trip. Yeah, I know. Not many people get second chances with a lovely possible bride. Well, don't rush it. <laughs> don't mess up this time. <laughs> <laughs> I've known since I dated him then, he was always going to live on the mountain. It's who he is. But there is something that has always connected us. And I definitely feel more love for him than I did when I was younger. It's deeper. It's after a lot of life experiences. It feels like a gift. So for me, it's just a matter of if I'm willing to sacrifice what I would need to sacrifice to be there with him. And that's what's unknown. It's going to be a challenge. Just being that in, like, one little tiny place, I mean, honestly, it's smaller than this room. Oh, well, what would you do? You know, I, I, would, I would do it. Daily life on the mountain can be a challenge. You're by yourself. Jen will learn really quick that it's completely different than living in a quote, unquote, like, a society. You get blessed with somebody like Jen. And I don't like missing blessings. So the decisions that we make with each other and what we do is important. And it will shape the rest of our lives because I don't think there's another opportunity after this one. There is a spirit that lives in every single living thing. I smudge the house to clear any negative energies. I just want to make sure that all feelings are clean and pure and good. I'm Angela. I'm 56. I have a five-acre ranch. I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm Native American. I'm Apache and Ojibwe. It's very important to me to have Native values instilled in my family and in my life every day. This is my mama sage tree. I usually get sage from her. She's very old. <laughs> Yucca, Arizona is in the Mojave Desert. We have a very long summer that is incredibly hot, up to 120 degrees. Living off grid is one of the most challenging, crazy, self-doubting things that a person could do, and I love it. I appreciate the simpler things about it that I didn't notice living in a city. It is quiet. The sunsets are the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And I can see every star and smell every smell. I have freedom. No one's telling me how to live, where to live, what time to get up. I'm the boss of whatever I need to do in my life, and that's amazing. But what is life without love? Most of the fellas that I've tried to date just couldn't hack it here, because I am not your typical 56-year-old girl. I really need someone who's going to keep up with me physically, sexually, and wants to live this lifestyle off-grid on the ranch. And I believe I found that man. It's almost game time. Let's go. My name is Josh. I'm 27 years old. Can't wait to see Angela. I'm getting one step closer. Josh is a really big and tall man. He's a big old honk. He's really funny. Kind of crazy at times. I'm from northern Michigan, and I live in Dallas, Texas. I describe myself as an outgoing person. I like going out with friends, having drinks. Parties are always a good time. I like being around people. I don't like being alone. If I can stay out as late as possible, even though I have a big day tomorrow, <laughs> I'm doing it. I like my creature comforts. I like good massages, getting my feet touched. I like being pampered. Yes, America. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Tony hooked it up on the toast today. Five years ago, I met Josh in Los Angeles. I was in LA with 600 bucks in my pocket and trying to get into movies. I saw this gorgeous guy walking down the street, whipping his hair and <laughs> just sexy. <laughs> she was done up. She's looked pretty. 
I don't know, just something, there's something attractive about an older woman. And she was super sweet. He was just way hot. I couldn't take my eyes off of him. So I pulled over and... She's like, hey, what are you doing? Kind of like offering to give me a ride or something. And she was, you know, very caring and nurturing. And to me, that was just, you know, it was a big turn on. My connection with Josh was immediate. Both of us were very attracted to each other right away. Had a little bit of fun that night, had a good meal. We were making out, kissing. She gave me a and it was great, it was nice. He was so lively and electric and it kind of fed me energetically and I was feeling very youthful myself. I was feeling young and alive and, you know, he just kept things fun. Me and Angela's time together was only this wonderful three days. She went back to Arizona, and I ended up getting the job on some fishing boats. But we still just, I mean, we kept in contact. Josh and I have been discussing him coming to the ranch. It just seems like the right time for both of us. I've already lived in the city. I know I won't be happy there. Josh is more serious now. He has his own business. I got my own window cleaning business. I finally have the means to go see what Angela's all about and see if there is something that we have between us. I've always wanted to see where it would go because there was such magnetism between us. This could be a second chance for love for us. The landscape out here is beautiful, even though it's hot and it's kind of stressing me out a little bit. It's not easy to live where I live. I run on generator. It's not like a light switch. Uh, I don't have running water. Want to get water, it's got to be a physical act. We have rattlesnakes, we have mountain lions, we have coyotes, we have vultures, we have intense heat. The hard reality is it's difficult to live here. In spite of everything, I feel like he's worth trying for, and I really hope Josh can cut it because I really do care about him, and I want this to work. Me and Angela are very different. She lives out on this ranch in the middle of nowhere. I for sure wonder what I'm getting myself into. Is this going to be the rest of my life? I don't know. I know the desert's rough, but that's not really what I'm all about. I'm all about Angela. You know, I want to turn this into a relationship. We've been talking for a long time. I, I feel it. I feel that there's something there. So I know it's going to be hard living, but for a chance of love, those are the risks you take. Two minutes for you.